Lieber Brothers Company, makers of Swan, the soap with the exclusive super cream blend, presents... Our friend, Swan, with my friend, Irma. Starring Mary Wilson as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane. Friendship, friendship, just a perfect friendship when other friendships have been forgot. Theirs will still be hot. My friend, Irma. You know, so many times we run into that old controversial subject, who is the more intelligent, man or woman? Now, me, Jane Stacy, I like to stick up for us gals. As an example of woman's intelligence, I invariably point to Madame Curie, Queen Victoria, Dorothy Parker. I think I'm doing all right until the opposition nods knowingly in the direction of Irma Peterson. <laughs> and suddenly the ball game is over. Now, please don't misunderstand me. I love Irma Peterson. But there are times when... She... Well, for instance, last night Irma was reading a book. She read it through once, and then I noticed that she started on the back page and seemed to be reading toward the front. <laughs> Honey, what is it, Jane? You know, you read that book through once. What's the idea of reading it backwards? Well, I want to be fair. After all, there are two sides to every story. <laughs> See what I mean? This goes on every day, and I'm certain that on this lovely Saturday afternoon, it's not going to be any different. But I promised to meet Irma for lunch, so I better call her. Mr. Clyde's office. Hi, honey. You through for the day? Almost, Jane. Uh, do you know where I can find a Canadian stamp? Why do you want a Canadian stamp? Well, Mr. Clyde dictated a letter, and he wants me to mail it to Canada right away. <laughs> <laughs> Look, sweetie, uh, just put a United States stamp on it. Will it get there, Jane? Sure, I have pull in Washington. <laughs> <laughs> sweetie, where do you want to meet me? Well, uh... How about 49th and 6th? Uh, you know the corner where the fat policeman stands. The fat policeman? Yes, you know the one who always says, Hello, Irma, are you still lost? Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, that one. Oh, he's so nice, and he's interested in my health, too. He is? Yes, he keeps saying, Kid, you've been standing in the sun too long. <laughs> all right, sweetie, all right. I'll meet you there in a few minutes. Bye. Goodbye. Move on, Irma. Move on. Oh, hello, Irma. It's you. You still lost? Oh, hello, officer. I was just telling my girlfriend about you. Well, that's nice. Uh, you better cross now. The light's green. Thank you. Don't mention it. Just keep out of the sun. <laughs> I will. Oh, there's my girlfriend, Jane. Jane. Hello, honey. Well, shall we just walk? Do a little window shopping? All right, Jane. Oh, look, Jane, isn't that cute? The kids are making men out of snow. Yeah. You know, there are times when I think the man I'm in love with is made out of the same material. <laughs> oh, Jane, you've just got the blues because Richard hasn't proposed yet. Yeah, I guess so. Well, Jane, uh, I don't think you're handling him right. I think Richard needs some competition, something to make him jealous. For instance? Well, get some other girls to go out with him. What? Well, then he'll see how much better you are than the others Oh, sweetie, I've already used more tricks than Houdini There's nothing a girl can do, it's a man's world Well, that's what they say Yeah You know, sometimes when I feel like this, I wish I was born a man Not me, I wouldn't want to be born a man Why not? Well, I'd look so silly dancing with Al <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Irma, don't be ridiculous Irma Look ahead of you, there's an open manhole I've been down there, there's nothing to see <laughs> Jane What, honey? Look at that window, isn't that a beautiful bridal gown? Yeah, it's very lovely Come on, honey Oh, wait a minute, Jane Gee, what a beautiful gown And that girl in the window is certainly lucky Irma, she's just a dummy well, what does she care as long as her husband loves her? 
Oh, Jane, I'd give anything in the world to be a bride. Well, there stands Irma gazing pathetically at the bridal gown. I can tell by the expression on her face that she's picturing herself on her wedding day. She's just beaming with pride. Must be standing at the altar with Al. Now she's shaking her head up and down. Must be saying, I do. No, no, there's a fly on her nose. (laughs) Now she's extending her finger for the wedding band, and she's holding it up and admiring it. I don't know what kind of a wedding band it can be, but if Al gave it to her, it must say, Corona, Corona. (laughs) Sweetie, I hate to interrupt your daydreams, but we've got to be getting along. All right, Jane, but first I'd like to put a deposit on that bridal gown. Irma Peterson, how many times have I told you a bridal gown is the last thing a girl has to worry about? The last? Yes, the first thing is a man. I could be a bride. I have Al. Yeah, yeah, you have Al. You know, Irma, all brides go to their weddings with four things. Something old and something new, something borrowed and something blue. To this, you are adding a fifth thing. What? Something unemployed. (laughs) Well, so what? Well, Irma, you can't be happy with a man who can't give you the things that go with a home. For for instance, uh, uh, furniture, a refrigerator, vacuum cleaner, dishes. Yes, I I guess Al could never make it on his unemployment check. That's right. (laughs) Well, come on, honey, let's have lunch. No, I'm too sad to have lunch. I'm going to be an old maid. I'm going to go home. Hello? Oh, hello, Richard. Uh, No, Jane went off to do some shopping. I'm here alone. Huh? No, I'm not frightened. I've been alone before when there was no one with me. (laughs) Well, that's a good idea. I'll turn on the radio for company. Yes, goodbye, Richard. Listen, ladies, have you ever wished you might be a bride? Oh, yes, I have. You have? Then this program is going to make it possible for some lucky girl to have everything she'll ever need for that honeymoon cottage. Furniture, a refrigerator, a vacuum cleaner, a washing machine. Dishes? And, oh, yes, a complete set of dishes. (laughs) Say nothing of some silverware. And now listen carefully, and I'll tell you how you can participate in our show. Do you have a pencil ready? Can I use a fountain pen instead? Or a fountain pen. Now, all you have to do is write a letter to this station. How do you spell station? K-N-X. Thank you. And state in 25 words or less why you want to be a bride. It's very simple. Just 25 words beginning, I want to be a bride because... I want to be a bride because... Now, please understand this is not a contest. We merely select the six most interesting letters, and our studio audience will then choose the lucky couple. Please mail your letters to Lucky Couple. So until next week, this is Freddie Flip saying wedding bells to you all, and I do mean you all. I want to be a bride because... Come in. It's only me, Professor Kropotkin. (laughs) Hello, Irma, darling. Oh, Professor, why are you limping? Oh, my room is so dark, I keep falling over everything. Well, why don't you turn on the lights? I can't stand the sight of that place. (laughs) Emma, where's Janie? Oh, she's out. Oh, Professor, I'm so excited. Can you give me 25 words why a person should get married? No, but I got plenty of words about why you shouldn't. (laughs) What's it all about, Emma? Well, I have to write a letter. I want to be a bride because, and if they select my letter, I get a refrigerator, a, a furniture, vacuum cleaner, everything to make the house perfect. And Al will be your husband? Naturally. This you call perfect? (laughs) Professor, would you help me write the letter? Help you? Yes, you were once married. What made you get married? A weakness in my character. (laughs) Oh, you men say that. But wasn't there something that made you feel wonderful in 25 words? Listen, Irma, darling, with my wife, 25 words was just a breathing spell. (laughs) You know, she once stopped talking for five seconds. We all thought she had locked you. <laughs> no, Irma, I refuse to be accessory to this crime. Besides, I have to get back to my room. I'm having a fight with Mrs. O'Reilly. What about? I told her there's mice in my room as big as dogs. Well, what's she doing about it? She wants to charge me extra for running a kennel club. <laughs> 
Goodbye, Irma. Write your letter and good luck. I want to be a bride because... Because it's the only way for a girl to be married. <laughs> no. I want to be a bride because that's all a girl has to look forward to, and I've been looking so long my two eyes are tired. Oh, shucks, that's 26 words. I'll make it just one eye. No. So, now, let's see. I want to be a bride. I want to be a bride. Hello, honey. I want to be a bride. I want to be one, too, but I don't use up all this paper. Irma, what have you done to my stationery? What are you doing? Oh, Jane, did you ever hear of a program called Lucky Couple? Yeah. Yeah, you, you mean the one in which you write in why you want to be a bride in 25 words, and if you're the lucky couple, they furnish your home for you? Yes, and, oh, Jane, I'm not good at it. Would, would you write the letter for me? Well, honey, do you really think if Al got all those things, he'd marry you? Of course. You know, it would be very interesting to find out what Al would do if his back were against the wall. Okay, sweetie, all right, I'll write your letter for you. Oh, Jane, no girl ever had a better friend. Huh. And I'll get Al in the mood by making him a wonderful dinner tonight. Well, Irma, I know the way to a man's heart is through his stomach, but are you sure you know the road? <laughs> I mean, well, you know, you, you, you very seldom cook. Oh, I know, but I think this is a time to start, and I've been memorizing a recipe. Uh, I'm going to the store right now. To buy what? The white of an egg. The ones we have here, the, they won't do. They all have a yellow center. <laughs> And now, Susie Swan sings to us. Listen. My advice, says Susie, when you are buying soap for dishes, please be choosy. Swan gives a brand new kind of suds, you see. Your dishes wash so easily. Swan's gentle, too. I swan to you, says Susie. And you know, ladies, what Susie Swan is trying to tell you in that mighty pretty way is that now you can have faster dishwashing and protection for your hands at the same time with Swan Soap. Sure, because white floating Swan is made with an exclusive super creamed blend, a blend that means a wonderful new kind of suds. Float Swan in your dishpan from now on. You'll see how Swan Super Creamed Blend actually protects your hands, leaves them soft and lovely as ever. You'll see, too, how Swan whips into suds so fast. Billows of rich, hard-working suds that get you out of the kitchen in a hurry. A wonderful new kind of suds that rinse away so completely with one quick hot rinse that your dishes never need drying. Yes, with Swan, your dishwashing job is over fast. And your hands are left smooth and lovely because only Swan Soap gives you this exclusive super creamed blend. Well, the three of us have just finished the first dinner Irma ever cooked. And I must say, I am positively speechless. Not only did Irma look adorable, but she made a dinner that was fit for a king. And Al ate it like a king. <laughs> king Henry VIII. <laughs> he kept throwing bones all over the place. But I must hand it to Irma, not only was her food delicious, but it carried a message. A message you could not escape. The mashed potatoes were shaped like a heart, pierced by an arrow of paprika. <laughs> the rice, of course, hinted at a wedding. Then there was a half an avocado with a reddish in it. This was the baby in its cradle. <laughs> which, incidentally, Irma kept rocking all through the meal. <laughs> and then in front of a short-lighted candle, Irma had placed a black olive cut in two with the pit removed. Well, this could only represent Al's slippers in front of the fireplace. And then for dessert, she served those cute little Chinese fortune cookies, but she'd removed the original prophecies and replaced them with little slips of paper, which read... If you don't get married right away, you'll drop dead. <laughs> oh, it's a subtle kid, that Irma. But if she can get Al to agree to marry her this way or any other way, it's okay by me. I'll be happy to write the letter if she can get Al to say the word. Honey. Yes, Jane? You know, I simply must tell you that that was the most delicious dinner I've ever eaten. 
Right, Al? Oh, the best. Oh, thank you, Al. I'm glad to hear you say that because I realize how important cooking is in marriage. You see, uh, married people eat twice as much as single people because there's two of them. (laughs) Wait a minute, Irma. Did you invite me to this dinner so I'd propose? Yes, Al. Well, chicken, I don't think that's fair of you. I should at least have been given the right to choose my food. What do you mean, Al? Well, any guy about to walk the last mile always has the right to pick his own menu. (laughs) Oh, Al, how can you say that? Al, please, for once, don't live up to my expectations. Ah, chicken, I'm just kidding, yeah? I knew all along what you were up to. I got the hint at dinner when instead of serving the rice, you threw it at me. (laughs) Chicken, I'd marry you today, only... Only... Only what? Well, uh, it's just a question of until... Until one of your deals comes through? Like pumping up spaghetti and selling it for garden hose? (laughs) Yeah. Well, that one happened to peter out. That's why I can't commit myself. See, I'm getting 20 bucks a week from the unemployment office. But how do I know it'll be steady? (laughs) What with the coming election? These are uncertain times, you know. But, Al, I, I want to get married right away. I'm so tired of waiting. Know how you feel, chicken. But I resent your saying that. Tired of waiting. Now, let me ask you something. How long do you wait for a bus every day? Oh, about 10 minutes coming and 10 minutes going. That's 20 minutes a day. Six days a week, 52 weeks a year. Over a period of the time you've been working, that adds up to a lot of waiting. And, chicken, I think I deserve the same consideration as a bus. <laughs> You can stall Irma, but you can't stall me. Now, there's a chance. It may be slim, but it's a chance for you and Irma to win all the things necessary to furnish a home. Huh. Well, I'm going to write a letter for Irma in 25 words why she wants to be a bride and send it to the Lucky Couple program. Can't be done. Why not? Well, what would you write about? I mean, naturally, you'd write that Irma wants to be a bride because she's met a nice guy, a man of sterling character, a gentleman, a deep thinker, Personally, I don't think you can do me justice in 25 words. If she does win, would you go through with it? You know, Jane, if you worked half as hard on Richard as you do on me, you'd have been married 10 years ago. Look, now, Al, you're the one that Irma wants, and I want to see her happy. Now, what do you say? Well, putting it like that, there's only one man who can advise me. Who, Al? Who else but... Hello, Joe. (laughs) Al, got a problem. Irma and I are going on a radio program. Huh? No, Joe, not it pays to be ignorant. (laughs) Now, this is called the Lucky Couple Program, dedicated to making happy marriages. Joe, want to ask you a personal question. What do you think of marriage? Uh Uh-huh. 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 Mm-hmm. You love it? You think it's a wonderful institution? You think it's swell? And it's the best thing... Oh, your wife is sitting on your lap and she sends her regards, too. (laughs) Gotcha, Joe. Goodbye. Man's no help. He's trapped himself. Well, Al, what do you say? Okay, you write the letter and I'll go through with it. Well, I finally got the letter out. I believe I rewrote it 18 times because every time I tried to describe Al, I was sure it wouldn't go through the mails. (laughs) So I just kept playing around till I got 25 words that seemed to make a little sense, and I signed Irma's name and I sent it off. Well, you can imagine what Irma's been going through since then. Every morning, Irma's been running downstairs to meet the mailman. She brings him little cookies. And once, I believe, I overheard her asking him if he had any socks that needed darning. (laughs) Then she comes up and she waits by the phone. Once the phone rang at the same time that the mailman knocked and it was as close as Irma ever came to doing a split. (laughs) Well, this has just been going on for days and I don't think I can take it much longer. Honey. Yes, Jane? Look, why don't you just forget about that lucky couple program? I'm sure that if you'd won, you would have been notified by now. Oh, vacuum cleaners, refrigerators, washing machines. No wonder couples don't have many children today. They spend all their time in hardware stores. (laughs) Oh, maybe that's a milkman with a special. Come in. Hiya, chicken. Oh, it's you, Al. No news today from the program, huh? No, Al, I guess we're just not the kind of people who get things easy. We can only get them by working for them. Chicken, don't be vicious. (laughs) 
Hey, maybe, maybe the letter Jane wrote wasn't good enough. Huh? Now, listen, Al. I made such a gentleman out of you in that letter your own family would take you back. <laughs> What's the use? Let's not spill milk on each other and cry. <laughs> Take me to a movie. Okay, chicken, get your hat. Hello. Who? Irma Peterson. Yeah, Irma, it's for you. Thanks. Uh, hello? Yes, this is Irma Peterson. Who is this? Lucky couple program? I did? Oh, thank you. Oh, Al, they like the letter. Oh, uh, yes? Oh, sure, we'll come to your studio. And believe me, I'm so happy I'll tell all my friends to eat the dog biscuits you advertise. <laughs> oh, I mean, <laughs> goodbye. Jacob, we did it. Hey, you know, it'll feel kind of nice being married. Now, listen, Al, you haven't won yet. You still have to appear on the program and compete with the five other couples, you know. Five other couples? Yes, Al, they ask us questions. But I'm not worried. You always know what to do in an emergency. Like the time in the restroom when you didn't have any money. Oh, that was... <laughs> that was nothing. Well, not everyone would have known how to get amnesia so fast. <laughs> Come in. Hello, Jane. Hello, Richard. What a pleasant surprise. Oh, thank you. Hello, Irma. Al? Hi. Say, you two look kind of excited. Oh, Irma and Al are going to be on that lucky couple radio program tonight. You know, where the winners receive a house completely furnished? Oh, yes. I've heard it many times. I bet if you and Jane went on, you'd win. Uh, yes, I suppose. Oh, I know Jane wouldn't mind marrying you. <laughs> she told me so many times. Irma. <laughs> well, Jane, you did. And even in your sleep... Irma, you... don't... Uh, you... Can't you... Don't you think you better go? You and Al will be late. Yeah, that, that's right, chicken. We better hurry. Come on. <laughs> we'll listen in. Gee, Gina, I wish it was television, and then I'd be able to see you, and I wouldn't be nervous. <laughs> How's that again? Oh, never mind, never mind. The only thing I can say is good luck, honey, and we'll be sitting here pulling for you. Thanks, Jane. Come on, chicken. Take my arm, baby. Who knows? Pretty soon, you may be... Mrs. Al. Gee, Al, I wonder how the other couples are making out. Don't worry about them, chicken. We'll be called into the studio next. Now, we've got to make a good impression so we get the most applause. Well, I'm awful nervous. Well, just control yourself and answer the questions. Well, well... What do they usually ask? Well, they'll ask your age. You say 22. 22. Then they'll want to know how many children we would like. You say three or four. Three or four. Then they ask you why you picked me to be your husband. Now, here you got to lay it on thick because they like it romantic. Well, what do I say? Oh, gooey stuff. Like, I got the habits of Lincoln, the charm of Casanova, the smile of Mona Lisa, and I'm built like an ox. <laughs> of Lincoln, the charm of Casanova, smile of Mona Lisa, and built like an ox. You got it? Got it. All right, folks, come in the studio. Your interview is next. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you have just heard our fourth couple, and here are the next contestants. Let's give them a great big hand, huh? That's it. That's fine. Thank you. Richard, will you turn the radio up a little more? I want to be sure to hear everything. All right, Jane. And now, folks, for our next lucky couple. Miss, I see your name is Irma Peterson. Your age? Three or four. <laughs> what? Uh, I'm just a little nervous. Well, now, don't be nervous. Just relax. After all, there are only 15 million people listening to you. Now, tell us, when you marry this gentleman at your side, how many children would you like to have? Twenty-two. <laughs> uh, I'm getting everything backwards. Now, just take your time, miss, because this is the important question. I think I'm ready for this one. Good. Now, tell our audience why you selected this young man as the man of your dreams. Well, he has the smile of an ox, uh, <laughs> the habits of Casanova, uh, and he's built like Mona Lisa. Chicken! <laughs> well, what's the matter, Al? Oh, I know I left out Lincoln. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next contestants, please. But, but, mister, don't you want to ask me any more next questions? Next contestants, um, please. Oh. Oh, poor Irma. Oh, and 
and she tried so hard. Richard, why didn't Al talk? You know, he knows that Irma gets excited. Oh, I'll have an unhappy girl on my hands tonight. Say, I think I see them coming up the street now. How do you know it's Irma and Al? Well, the fellow's walking on the inside. That's them. <laughs> well, I'd better try and cheer her up some way. Put the radio on, huh? Get some music. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our pot of cash feature. If you're home when we call your phone number, all you have to do is answer the phone and we give you $10,000. There goes the wheel. The first name is Irma Peterson, and we're ringing her now. Irma Peterson? Yes, they're ringing us. Hello, Jane. Answer the phone. Answer the phone, Irma. It's a radio show, and they want to give you Nothing ten... doing. They made a fool of me once tonight. They won't do it again. I'm going to bed. Good night. Well, I'm sorry you weren't in, Miss Peterson. Sorry you weren't in. And you know, even when she is in, there's nobody home? <laughs> when you're dealing with my friend, Irma. This morning, I found Irma placing a bar of swan soap outside of our window. So I said, Honey, why are you leaving that bar of swan soap out there? And Irma said, Well, every morning a pigeon comes to the window, and I want our swan to make friends. <laughs> well, Irma, <laughs> that's one worry you might as well forget. Swan already has lots of friends. Everyone's familiar with that bright green and white wrapper with the big white swan on it. Sure, because that wrapper tells the ladies they're getting the white floating soap with the exclusive super-creamed blend, swan soap. And as you ladies listening know, it's important to get swan because super-creamed swan gives you a wonderful new kind of suds for dishes. Suds that protect your hands, leave them lovely to look at, smooth to the touch. Suds that whip up faster in the dishpan for quick dishwashing and then rinse away so completely with one hot rinse that you don't need to dry your dishes. Yes, Swan Super Creamed Blend saves you time and saves your hands, too. So from now on, float Swan in your dishpan. You'll like Swan's wonderful new kind of suds. <laughs> My Friend Irma, presented by Swan, another fine product of Lever Brothers Company, was produced and directed by Cy Howard. Tonight's script was written by Cy Howard and Park Levy. Folks, next Monday evening, tune in an hour earlier over most of these same stations for the Lux Radio Theater. And then stay tuned to listen to... Our Friend Swan. With my friend, Irma. <laughs> Starring Mary Wilson as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane. The part of Professor Kropotkin was played by Hans Conried. Frank Bingman speaking. Spry. Cakes are light and high. Spry. There's a reason why. Spry. Cakes improve with Spry. Rely on Spry. You bet there's a reason why Spry is the cake-making wonder. Spry has an amazing cake improver secret. Try the Sure Spry one bowl way and be certain of lighter, finer, richer cakes every time. No other type of shortening has Spry's cake improver secret. For new cake-making success, rely on Spry. Pure, all-vegetable Spry with cake improver. Rely on Spry. Tune in again to my friend Irma next Monday evening, immediately following the Lux Radio Theater. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.